So welcome to week three of Learning Creative Learning. Uh, as you might see, there are only two of us here to start off this week. Philip is away in Europe. You'll be seeing him somewhat later on in some pre-recorded videos, but right now it's just Natalie and myself uh, kicking off the week. It was been enjoyable over the past week looking on the discussion forum to see some of the scratch project that people have been sharing. Yeah. So for example, one Kathy or CLM for the first time made a project called the Art of Scratching and Creative Life Lessons. And that brought in photos and her own drawings. And she said, I think of myself, I'm more of an art person, not a tech person. But in the process, she really introduced herself, introduced her art, and, and it was a really nice thing to see. Yeah, I really liked seeing the variety of the projects because some were sort of aesthetically beautiful and you know, great images and animations. And others, you could see some more complex programming behind it and different types of logic. There were some games out there where you had to move around and catch people's interests as they were falling down this text on the screen where you're catching figure skating or social networks or photography. Uh, and for me, it's sort of connected to what we often say about Scratch is that it helps people develop both as creative thinkers, but also as systematic reasoners and also as collaborators. We saw people building off of each other's work also. Yeah, and I think some people talked about getting frustrated, but then also being really satisfied once they were able to solve the problems. And Bob Kahn shared a story from his own classroom where they spent two weeks creating a scratch project based on a science concept or something they had done through that year. They could choose their own and really found things that they wanted to share. And in that process, some of the students said that originally they were hesitant to use Scratch, but then in the end ended up telling him and saying things like, oh, now I realize I don't have to be afraid if I don't know how something works at first, I can figure it out. Yeah, it's true. I really like the descriptions. Uh, some is more than the projects themselves. The project projects, you just see the final product, but from people's posts, you get to hear the stories behind them, whether it's their own Scratch creations or talking about the young people they've worked with. Or another one, Jen Bishop had said that, I feel like I improve by leaps and bounds every time I make something new with Scratch. So that sense of process of how you're changing over time, again, reminded me of the creative learning spiral and the iteration of sort of you know, coming up with new ideas every time you go through the spiral. Yeah, and also people talking about rather than trying to learn the program and then figure out what you want to make, figure out what you want to make and then try to figure out how to do it, which might be tinkering on your own or asking someone for help or looking at other people's code and getting ideas. Yeah. And I did think in reading through that, it started to have a natural transition into this week's theme. Although last week we talked about projects and people were working on scratch projects as the activity. But also they were, in many of them, you could see people were work on things they really cared about and sharing their interests and passions. And passion is the P word theme of this week. Uh, so during the course of this session, we'll be looking at passion from a few different ways. We'll start off with a recorded session with you, me, and Philip sharing some of our reflections on the relation between passion and learning and some stories that connected for us in, in, in interesting ways, passion and learning. And then we'll be having focused look at a particular learning center, the computer clubhouses, and how it connects passion and learning. Yeah, and then from there, we'll be seeing Jalisa, who's one of the members of the clubhouse. She started, she'll tell you, in, back in seventh grade. She's now about to go to graduate school, but she'll talk about her trajectory. It was part of a digital media and learning session that happened earlier this month, and we thought that that would be an interesting thing to share, just her whole process of learning from starting from being reluctant and, and then really growing a deeper interest and now sharing it with other young people. So after those two segments about the, the clubhouse, first a visit to the flagship clubhouse here in Boston and then hearing about Jalisa's experiences, we'll then shift a little bit and talk about what's the role of interest-based learning and passion in other settings like schools. And we'll bring a video clip from last year where Mimi Ito addressed some of those issues. And then we'll try an experiment again. We'll go into breakout sessions to hear from you so you'll get a chance to talk about some of your experiences in supporting interest-based learning in different settings. Uh, and then we'll wrap up the week with looking ahead with activity for next week. 